Hello students, in this video we will discuss equilateral triangles using Kalmar's numbers. Let's let ABC be a triangle and A, B, and C, the points of the complex plane represent those vertices. Points of the complex plane. Which represent A, B, and C respectively. Now, we're very used to studying equilateral triangles. They're nice and beautiful, right? So here's my point A, here's a point B, and here's a point C. I've tried to draw this in such a way that we have an equilateral triangle, right? There's our equilateral triangle. And of course, all of these measures over here are pi over three, right? Pi over three, pi over three, pi over three. So pi over three plays a special role in the study of the equilateral triangles, right? And so we can say, what's, what's one elementary sort of definition of equilateral triangles, right? So let's recall definition, A, B, C is equilateral. Just like we talk about in ordinary high school geometry, if and only if, if and only if the length of B minus A is the length of C minus B is the length of A minus C, right? So in other words, all the lengths of the triangle are the same. Excellent. Once you have this, the law of sines or the law of cosines will tell you the angles have to be the same as well, right? So we can use the law of cosines and immediately get that for free. Now, one other really neat thing is that we have a simple proposition, proposition ABC is equilateral if and only if ABC is similar to the cycle BCA, right? That's easy to prove as well, right? That's a very good, if you're sort of rusty on your high school geometry, try proving this if and only if. It's a very straightforward, easy proof to do, okay? Now, the cool thing about this is now I'm able to use complex numbers, right? So now this is true if and only if what? If and only if C minus A over B minus A is equal to A minus B over C minus B, okay? So we get some there's some version of the cross ratio where notice that these expressions over here are just the opposites of each other, right? So we have some idea that C minus A times C minus B is equal to negative one, right? Excellent, okay? Good. So now I can also write this using our determinant formulation. So alternatively, ABC is equilateral If and only if what? If and only if the determinant of 1, 1, 1, A, B, C, and then I'm going to cycle it, C, B, A, B, C, A, is equal to zero. Now let's do this determinant and see what we get, okay? So if we do this determinant, what are we going to have? Hence, A, B, C is equilateral. If and only if what? If and only if, let's see, I have an A, B minus C squared a b minus c squared then we're going to have a negative a squared negative a squared plus a b c then finally we're going to have an a c with a positive sign and a minus b squared is equal to zero and so this is true if and only if and this is a sort of a standard result in the theory of complex numbers uh, uh, triangle a b c is equilateral if and only if a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to what is equal to a b plus b c plus a c like that. Beautiful, okay? Now let me illustrate a sort of a, a standard way of using this identity over here, okay? So here's an example problem. Let's suppose that, let's say that a squared is equal to b c and b squared is equal to a c. Prove that the triangle is equilateral. Okay. So here's the proof. Well, let me consider a squared, b squared. a squared, b squared is going to be what? It's going to be b, c times a, c, which is going to be a, c squared, c squared times a, b, right? Now, if a, if 
one of them is zero, then we all this is sort of forces a trivial situation, so they're non-zero. So this implies, of course, by canceling out a factor of AB, that C squared is equal to AB. So now I have A squared is BC, B squared is AC, and C squared is AB. So adding the boxed equations, so adding the boxed equations gives A squared plus B squared plus C squared is equal to AC plus BC plus a, uh, AB. Beautiful. And then this condition, as we know from this statement over here, is equivalent to ABC being an equilateral triangle. Excellent. Okay. Now, one other neat thing that's going to help us understand the next result is the following. So let's let, let's let zeta be e to the 2 pi i over 3. And this, of course, is a primitive third root of unity. So this is a primitive third root of unity. And now let's consider, let's consider a plus zeta b plus zeta squared c times a plus zeta squared b plus zeta c. Let's consider this expansion over here and multiply it out, right? So this expansion over here, let's do the a's first. I'm going to have an a plus what? a plus zeta squared a b, okay? Plus zeta a c, good. Next terms are going to be a b zeta, then zeta cubed b plus zeta cubed b, plus zeta squared b c, zeta squared b c. And then finally, we're going to have a zeta squared c, zeta squared a c, then we're going to have a uh, zeta to the power of 4 bc plus zeta to the 4 bc. And finally, we're going to have a zeta cubed c plus zeta cubed c. Okay, So that's a lot of expressions. Let's simplify this over here. So I'm going to circle these terms over here. So I have an a, and then what else do I have? I have a zeta cubed b and a zeta cubed c over here. And of course, those are squares, right? So I forgot my squares. So that's going to be really a squared, right? a squared, b squared, right, because it's b squared, and then c squared. Beautiful. Okay, so those are squares. So really, zeta cubed is a third root of unity, so that tells me that zeta cubed is equal to 1. Okay, excellent. So this is really what? These terms, oh, those box terms are a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Good. Now, let's look at this a, b. So this is an a, b term, this is an a, b term, and those are the only a, b terms. Now, I also know that this equation factors, this implies that 1 plus zeta plus zeta squared is equal to what? 1 plus zeta plus zeta squared is equal to 0, right? By factoring this equation over here. This is the cyclotomic polynomial, right? So I've just written out the cyclotomic polynomial for the third roots of unity. Okay. And so what does that tell me? Well, I really have a zeta, square, zeta squared plus zeta AB, but zeta squared plus zeta is negative 1, right? So this is going to be negative AB. Let's look at these terms over here. I have a zeta AC, zeta AC, and a zeta squared AC. By similar reasoning, those are negative. So that's negative AC. And then finally over here, let's look at these terms over here. I have a BC zeta squared. And then zeta to the fourth, but zeta to the fourth is equal to what? By this relationship, zeta to the fourth, zeta to the fourth is equal to zeta, right? Excellent. Okay. Okay, good. And so that's going to be a zeta, and then a zeta what? And then a zeta squared. So that's going to be a, these terms together give me a negative one as well, negative bc. So in other words, what have we just proven over here? I know that this is equal to zero if and only if abc is equilateral. Which means that it, if this expression over here, if the, pro, if, the, if the product of these two terms is equal to zero, the product of these two terms is equal to zero if and only if A, B, C is an equilateral triangle. So this gives us another condition by which we can test to see if the triangle is equilateral, okay? So we have the definition, namely that all the lengths are the same. We have the cyclic similarity definition, which allows me to conclude a special case of the cross ratio is equal to 1, right? So in this case, we have a very special cross ratio. We have our, determinants, our, our determinant formulation of equilateral. And then we have this boxed equation over here, 
which oftentimes is one of the more elementary ones to check because this, in some sense, this a squared plus b squared plus c squared pops up all the time when you're measuring the overall length of a, of a three-dimensional complex number. So these, the, and these symmetric polynomials appear all the time. So th this condition is oftentimes very useful to check, whereas it, we're going to see in, the in future videos where we start to prove some theorems using these results that this expression over here being equal to zero will also tell us that the triangle is equilateral, right? So not only the product is equal to zero, but in fact, this first term will give us all the information we need to determine if a triangle is equilateral, which we'll see in further videos. Thank you very much.